Hey everybody, it's me Undead Viking coming to you with another video review. Uh, so it's getting colder out, I'm getting the beard back. Uh, I don't, you know, have the goatee during the summer. Somebody once asked me if I, um, I've ever shaved the beard. Uh, oh man, it was like, I'm gonna guess 15 years ago, maybe a few more. Um, Metallica was in town, and so I actually, like, shaved the chin and had the Hetfield, uh, going on. Um, and it looked just about as bad as you could imagine. But, anyway, enough about that. Uh, the game I am reviewing today is High Noon Saloon from Slugfest Games. Uh, this is a, uh, obviously a Western-themed game. Not a lot of Western-themed games out there. I mean, I, I... I guess I shouldn't say there isn't a lot. I mean, there's there's games like, uh, um, uh, uh, there's that uh, uh, Bang, of course, the very popular card game of, of, of shooting each other and trying to uh, take each other out. Um, Dark Horse was a Western-themed game. Um, there's a few other ones out there, White Herb, things like that. But uh, I've always been kind of uh, surprised, I guess, a little bit, that there hasn't been a lot more um, games based upon old west shootouts you know i mean how many times have you watched a clint eastwood movie or uh, or like you know the young Unfor you know the unforgiven for example or uh pulled out tombstone or or ugh, wyatt herb you know and and you know watch that i mean open range a relatively newer uh western but it seems like there's always like a western movie coming out and 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 you know true grit just came out you know and and um you know the whole idea of of you know uh, having a six gun at your side and, and not taking no guff, you know, as far as that and the whole rambunctious way of life in the old west. I mean, it was it was a fairly um, it was a fairly uh, you know thematic and engrossing idea. And I've like I said, I've always been kind of surprised. I mean, it seems like you can't uh, turn around and uh, not run into a fantasy themed uh, board game. Or now, right recently, it seems like the whole space exploration theme because of the, you know, popularity of, like, Eclipse and other games like it. It seems like that's the new way to go. Uh, but, um, this game uh, is a card game. It is kind of odd because I thought that if we're going to be, like, having, uh, you know, combat in, in, in the Old West, you'd have dice. I mean, I just, I automatically assumed this would be kind of a dice game, but it really isn't. It's, it's, it's cards that you get to play and, and you get to, uh, you know, equip your character. And of course, yes, there are different characters and they're very iconic, if you will, to, uh, some of the, the genres of movies and, and the types of characters that are in those, those movies. But, um, you are able to equip guns and, and weapons and other items, of course, and uh, and then you do battle in, of course, you know the I, you know the the always present saloon and and it has a lot of and as I show I'll show you how to play it has a lot of the very um, I, I shouldn't say trite but very common uh, things that you would see in in those m movies when the gunfight in the saloon occurs with the uh, people swinging from the chandelier or uh, getting thrown through a window or you know and th those sorts of things and um it isn't an, it isn't a really in-depth game by any means it doesn't have a lot of uh serious thinking going on but um hopefully i can show you how the game plays and you can kind of get a glimpse of just you know how how much fun the game can be um if it's played in a light-hearted manner light hearted manner uh but enough yak yak let's uh, go ahead and i'm going to show you how you play high noon saloon all right awesome let's do this see six guns okay in high noon saloon uh this is your game board uh each player will get one of these player mats that they'll use to put their character on and their weapons and keep track of their health there or grit as it's known um you know and as an aside does anybody ever remember those old uh ads about uh, kids that you could uh, go around and sell a magazine called grit I, I i just remember seeing those in the back of my comic books years and years and years ago but anyway never mind um <laughs> you get these little heart shaped things with a little hole in them and you place that on your uh, your your grit or your life as you take damage you'll move this and as you heal damage you'll move it up um, 
I don't know, you can play with whatever you want to start with. The rules suggest 20. They say if you want to play a longer game, uh, pick 30. Um, it is important to note that you can never ha get uh, more health than what you started with. So, uh, you know, if you start with 20, you can't ever heal higher than that. Um, you then hand out to each person uh, a character. And you can see, um, you know, James Masterson. Oh, I wonder who that's supposed to be. You know, and of course, uh, you know, there's the female characters as well. Um, you have the option of playing the basic game with this, or you can actually uh, use their special abilities. As with any game with a character with special abilities, uh, they just um, are you know break the rules in some way. So like here, and I haven't explained all the rules to you, but. Um, if you can read this, it says, during your jump phase, you may jump to any cover as long as there is room. Uh, this still gives you restricted movement. And, of course, so it's Clint Eastwood, you know. Um, and if you jump from the upstairs balcony anywhere other than no cover, you do not receive the plus two melee attack bonus. So, you know, it's just little things like that, um, like as I said, that break the rules. So, we'll be Clint, or the man with no name, and we'll place that on our character location like that. Uh, to begin the game, each player will get seven cards out of the saloon deck. The saloon deck will have weapons in it. It'll have different abilities and different actions that you can do. Um, you go ahead and I'll just draw seven cards at the top. Five, six, seven. And hopefully you get some weapons. And uh, one of the first things uh, that you do is, well, and I should mention that everybody starts off in the middle. So if we are playing, and if you notice, there are these little dots and like orange dots uh, means that when you have restricted movement, which will happen due to weapon effects or due to uh, movement that you do, um, you will take your pawn, you know, let's see, you flip it over. There's that orange around it. When that when you get restricted movement, you turn this around, and that means you can only go to spaces that have the orange circle. But um, and also when you move to wherever you're going to move in the saloon, if the spaces are taken, um, you are unable then to move into that spot. You can't choose to. So I'm just it'd be a rare game to have. Um, you know, all six people for me anyway, due to the fact that if we have six people, we usually play something fairly epic, and it can get a little crowded, but um, don't worry, as the game progresses, you, you disperse pretty quickly, because you don't want to be um, able to be shot or, or punched very easily. Oh, and I should notice mention before I place all those guys on there, um, it's kind of tough to see, and once again, like I said, I, I, I do hate zooming and stuff during my videos, but I'm going to in this case. Um, notice those yellow arrows You'll see them, and the, you'll see the, the, the borders there, the yellow borders. So you see these yellow arrows with arrows pointed this way, and, you know, arrows pointed that. In some places, you'll see, the, you know, arrows pointed both ways in both directions. And in some places, you only see them pointed in certain directions. Now, it should be mentioned that um, that's for melee attacks only, not for, uh, you know, using your guns. And that determines whether or not you are able to make an attack into that area. So if you were in here, using, if you want to do a melee attack, you could attack behind the bar with your melee. But people behind the bar could not melee attack out into uh, that area. And so you can see there, uh, you know, over here, there's no cover, but you know you have the most options as far as where your melee attacks go. Uh, also, other areas do have certain abilities. I'll just go over those really quickly. When you see a shield and a bonus, that's a bonus to your your block, meaning that you'll be able to resist some damage. If you see the little explosion there with the the uh, the star, red star, and, and the number, that's the adjustment to your attack, meaning that attacks might do more or less damage depending on where they are. And also, you'll notice that there are these little two little bullet icons there. If you end your turn uh, behind the player piano, uh, you will gain a couple of bullets for one of your weapons. If you end up behind the bar after your turn and you do not make an attack on anybody, uh, you are able to heal to health. Theoretically, you're stealing some liquor and, and gaining some grit back from doing so. So I'll just zoom back out. And like I said, I do apologize for that. But, 
Um, you know, I get my seven cards, and like I said, you kind of have to hope that you get some weapons. I didn't get any weapons this time. You know what? I'm just going to go through here. I'm just going to grab some. There we go. There we go. Much better seven cards. So here you go. You have like a Derringer, a repeat and rifle. You know, you just wing me, and if you notice, like there's all these, there's of course a little flavor text are telling you exactly what it does. Um, it reduces the damage of the attack to two, and you ignore your cover defense. So um, if you were get blasted with like a double barrel shotgun or something, and it was going to do like five, six damage to you, uh, you could play after as as your uh, to defend. And notice that it tells you what you defend against. It has a gun up there in the corner right there, and so you would just take two damage instead of the more. Um, you know, same thing with with this diving for the floor. You know, you drop the weapon in your fist, but you gain three block to damage, and that's against that. Um, you know, and this you know would be a bonus if you played this with one of your attacks. You get plus two damage. It's once against weapon. You know, taste hot lead varmint. And, you know, and they, I should mention that the cards are very thematic, and they, and they, they capture the, the the mood, if you will. Um, you know, I got the drop on ya. Uh, the attack ignores your cover defense, and you know, if the target is not receiving defense from cover, you get to bonus one damage. So stuff like that. And now I'll show you the weapons really quick. Like I got this, uh, the repeat and rifle. And this tells you how many bullets you can possibly have, so it can have up to eight bullets. If I choose to use one bullet in attack, it'll do one damage. If I choose to use two bullets in attack, it'll do three. And if I choose to use three bullets in an attack, it'll do four. This up here tells me that it's a gun. And if I do use it to hit somebody over the head with, you know, if I run out of bullets or I just choose to use it that way, it melee damages too. So, and I, you notice also that the fist if you have no weapons, you always use the fist for two damage. So I'll place the repeat and rifle there. And I did get this Derringer. And um, you'll notice it has possible one bullet. And attacking a target in your own cover, meaning in the same spot, I'll do three. Uh, anywhere else, it does one. And so I'll go ahead and I can... And this, I should mention, this little thing down here means that I can put it in my holster. Which means that if something should happen and this gun gets knocked out of my hand or something like that, then I can quickly move the gun that's in my holster to my hand and as a, as a quick draw situation. Now, whenever you have a gun, one of the first things you do is you draw from the load deck and it tells you how many bullets are in there. So, my rifle would have three bullets, which isn't so awesome. And I'm going to bet that my Derringer, oh, two bullets, but my Derringer can only have uh, one anyway. So, you just go ahead and put there. So now I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to, to, to do battle with the other people that are in the saloon that I'm going to fight with. So I'm just going to put some people in here real quick and I'm just going to show you how a, a turn goes. Uh, if this was not the first turn of the game, uh, we, you'd, uh, you'd have a scavenging phase, which means that you get to discard uh, as many of your cards that you have uh, as you want and draw cards up to seven so that's you know and you can do that every turn so it allows you to replenish if you just got a bad deck of cards you know that, that doesn't have a weapon or, or anything that you can uh, that's handy uh, you can ditch those and you can get something back then you move on to your weapon phase uh, this allows you to equip new weapons if you drew any new cards um, you know, move weapons between your fist and your holster if you have reload cards that allow you to put more bullets back in your gun you can do that and you can repeat those actions and take them in any order you want. Then you move to the jump phase. Now this is a situation where if you are in a spot that allows you to jump out of cover into no cover, uh, you can do so at this time. Um, perhaps somebody has put some dynamite in the location that you're at and you need to get out of there quickly or, or any number of reasons why you may want to do that. Maybe you have certain cards that only work when you're in a no cover situation. But you know, if you want to, you would, you would jump out of that situation, and then you would, as I said, you flip your, your uh, person over because you get restricted movement. You move on to the fighting phase. When you do a fight, you declare who you're going to attack. You say, I'm going to use, you know, my repeating rifle, and I'm going to, you know, shoot this dude. And I'm going to use two bullets to do it. So it's going to do three damage. Now, you don't roll dice or anything to determine if you hit. It, it just determined that, yeah, okay, you're going to hit that, hit that guy. So... 
Now you can go ahead and if you want to, you can play any cards you want that might add to the damage. So let's say I played, you know, this card, Taste Hot Lead, so it add two. So I would do four points of damage. And then the other player gets to play one block card. You now that, that would hopefully mitigate some of that damage. And if they're able to do so, you know, then they, you know, they, they mitigate the damage in any way possible. Perhaps they have a counterattack card. There's cards that you can play that allow you to immediately fight back and, and attack back to the person. Other things as well. It's, it's, you know, it's one of those games that, you know, the, the, you get this giant deck of cards and there's a myriad of different effects in here. And they're all, like I said, very thematic and very interesting, if you will. So... You, you know, you, you go back and forth, you determine who gets hurt, who takes damage, and, uh, and then you, you adjust your grit as, as needed. And then you move on to actually then the hunkering down phase, which you can move from your current space on the board uh, into anything that, any space that you're able to. If you um, are in, like I said, restricted movement, you might only be able to move to certain locations, you know, as far as the orange, but if you're not, then you can basically move to any spot on the board as long as the place is open. There's no limit to how far you can move. I mean, if, if you're back here, you can say, I'm going to move up into the balcony if you want, as long as that space is open. Um, just imagine all the old Wild West movies you have and everybody's just running willy-nilly as, as bullets ricochet off the walls, breaking mirrors and glasses, and you can just move wherever you like. And then after you do your set, that movement, now you can go ahead and you can shoot your guns again. You can do the same thing you did in the first weapon phase, move guns around, reload them, shoot, you know, um, and I shouldn't say shoot them because you don't actually get to do that again. You can't fight, shoot again, but what I mean is that you're able to move your guns around and uh, reload them just like you did in the first weapon phase. And then that ends the turn. So you, you know, go right back to the, you know, everybody checks to see if, you know, whoever has, like, been eliminated. This is a player elimination game. So if you have been knocked down to zero grit, you're you're out of the game, and, and you have to wait until, you know, the next time you play to, to get your revenge. But then, you know, the next player, you know, the next round begins, you, you do your scavenge phase, you decide which cards you're going to discard, which cards you're going to keep, draw new ones, and you just do it again. And you just keep having this fight in the saloon until there's one person standing and, and you win the game. There is a t there is a team version of the game and, and it does work pretty well and it's fun where there's different options and scenarios basically that you work with uh, you know, your compatriots at the table. But And we've played it a few times and, and it does work really well and it's fun. But I so much more enjoy uh, the all against all type of situation because with my group uh, we always uh, end up in situations where we're like, don't fight me and, and you and me and we'll team up on that guy because he's got, you know, 16 health left and we've only got four each. And, and you know, you have those things. And, of course, one person always ends up backstabbing the other. and and But that's my group and, and we really enjoy that, uh, that, that dynamic, that the game beyond the game type of thing. Um, but, yeah, that should give you a really good idea of how to play uh, High Noon Saloon. As I said, it's very thematic. Um, the cards uh, themselves... Uh, like I said, just have tons of a little of things that like, you know, you know, I'm a calling you out, you know, it's like you can, you can call somebody so they have to leave cover because they don't want to be thought of as being a coward or, or, you know, here's a, here's a melee weapon. You can see that there's a fist there instead. Um, and there's all kinds of, uh, cool things that certain things that do, um, the aforementioned, you know, bottle of bourbon, uh, you can use it to club somebody over the head, but, uh, you can also you know, take a swig, it says here, for bourbon and regain two grit because, you know, you know all, everybody drinks uh, hard, hard whiskey in, in the in the olden West days, you know, because that was just all they, they drank, right? And, like, the cast iron skillet, you know, here's a weapon you can use to, to for a pretty good melee weapon, you know, doing three damage. But you can use it to block a bullet, you know, and uh, against... You know, so there you go. You you can you you drop this to uh, play play it as a block card. Uh, so you'd lose the weapon, but you would you know protect yourself against four damage as far as the bullet goes. And it's, it's stuff like that. And it's just um, you know, like I said, there's there's it's a giant deck of cards. And you know, if you do run out, obviously you just reshuffle and and uh, and 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 play. You know, and and take the discards, reshuffle them, and and so you have a new draw deck. 
But there you go. That's how you play a high noon saloon. Uh, it's 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 very fast. It's very you know. Yeah, I know there is player elimination, but don't worry. The game doesn't take a long time to uh, be over. So even if you do get killed or knocked out, uh, you won't be waiting long until the next time you play. But let me tell you exactly uh, what I think of the game. All right, there you go. Um, how you play the game. I think this game might win a prize for, like, the smallest actual functional game board. I mean, you're actually moving your people around on this board, and and it's, you know, it's tiny. I mean, look, it's my face. You know, it, it, it you know, so it, anyway, I hope you can understand I me. Mean, I can put my hand over the entire thing. But, hey, you know, it works, and, um... Uh, I think if they made it bigger, it probably might have uh, lose something. I, it ma makes it feel kind of cramped and enclosed, you know. Um, you know, as far as uh, so the gun battle, so you kind of get the feeling uh, for, if you will, uh, you know how dangerous a gunfight would be in a saloon. Um, as I said, it's not a real difficult game. It's all about making sure you have the right cards at the right time. And thus, it's a game that is, unfortunately, for some people, uh, based mostly on luck. I mean, yes, you can hold on to some cards and wait for certain situations for them to come in handy and then, you know, to use them in an optimal uh, moment. But if you don't get those cards or that optimal moment doesn't come along, you're kind of stuck with a situation where you, you know, have an opponent that's just being able to blast away at you and you just can't seem to find the right gun or you just can't find any ammo for that gun or you can't get close enough to use the melee weapon that you have and and so on and so forth so i mean i won a game that it was literally one of those things where i had the perfect cards where i um i didn't attack on somebody and then the card was through the window or something like that. And so what I what I did was I had the guy and, and it was down to me and this other person playing and I and you play this card so basically you throw this person through the play glass window of the saloon as as always happens in the movies. And um, then he comes you I I got a turn of sitting there. He couldn't do anything for one turn. He's outside, you know, uh, rolling around in the mud or whatever. Uh, gathering his wits, and then so I have a turn, so I was able to go behind the bar and heal, and then, and then the next turn happens, and now he comes running back into the bar, and he can only go right into that center spot on on the map, and so you know he had no defense, he had almost no hit points, so blam, no defense, gone, dead. I win the game. Now there's nothing the other player could do and so that was kind of a sour taste in that person's mouth of a situation you know and but i mean I, and admittedly that's a very distinct and uh singular you know kind of rare situation to have happen i mean I, I, he had to be low on hit points i had to have that particular card i had to be able to you know like i said throw him out the window and then also have a gun waiting you know for him to come back in so i could plug him again when he came running back in the room you know and so if you know any of those factors didn't come up the way they needed to for me then you know that wouldn't have happened but you know it, it is something to think about as far as uh, the game has a, a bit of a luck box attitude to it. And so if you can't handle, uh, you know, just, hey, uh, this game just isn't, it wasn't your turn or wasn't, wasn't uh, your um, day to be lucky, if you will, then, uh, and if you can't handle that in the game, you probably won't enjoy this one. If you can let the theme take over as my friends and i do and if you are a fan of you know playing out the, the the cards as you play them and and cursing your luck and and laughing at your friends and they have bad luck and cheering when you do really well and and uh, aren't averse to the idea of plugging uh your friends full of bullets uh and and you know then yeah you can uh you can enjoy the heck out of high noon saloon uh, i know i did and I know I have because of the fact that, you know, I guess it's just, it's, it's, like I said, it's very lighthearted. I don't have to tax my brain for this one. And, um, you know, it, it, it tells a story. And I, and I've said that in a lot of different, uh, videos that I've done. I really, really enjoy games that 
tell me a story, you know, I mean, you know, so after it's done, there's a narrative, you know, it's like, oh, okay, we were all, all in this bar, we all pulled our guns, we started fighting, um, you know, you ended up being beaten to death with a frying pan, uh, you got blasted, you know, off the balcony by a double barreled shotgun, uh, I, I dropped the dynamite over by the player piano, which killed you, and uh, in the very end, you know, I got a knife in the back and I died and you won. You know, and it's something like that where it's like, and then you can picture it in your head, you know, and it's, it's kind of funny and it's a little hilarious. And so, um, you know, and, and you, if you can settle back and enjoy it, it, it it's a really good game. Um, so, you know, there you go. I mean, I always hate saying, for the right group of people, this will be a good game. Because you can say that about any game. But for this game, it really does fit. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I want to think that it's a, it's kind of a filler, you know. I mean, it's one of those games you can play to ramp up. Um, but for us, it, it's turned into we played it and then we're like, let's play it again, you know, because we want to like, you know, if we <laughs> felt like we got uh, robbed, you know, because we just couldn't get good cards or whatever, we want to play it again. So, you know, I can be the one that shoots you next time. And um, so, yeah, that's a mark of a... I, obviously, I'm having a good time with it. If I, I if after I play it once, I just want to, you know, pick up the board and, 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 and play it one more time, you know, just because I want to see uh, if it can be my turn, you know, to win, if you will. So, there you go. Uh, Slugfest Games, High Noon Saloon. Um, thank you, Slugfest Games, for uh, handing me this copy at Gen Con. I appreciate it very much. Uh, if any of you have any comments or questions or concerns you can leave them below and i'll answer them to the best of my ability uh until next time as i always am i am undead viking and i greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch this video you have yourself an awesome day Bye bye